let's continue dissecting the Dublin Core abstract model. This next diagram is the description set model. And let's start with the described resource. The described resource is obviously the thing that you are describing, the, the object of the metadata record. So the described resource is described with a description, cleverly enough. A description is made up of, that says one to n, one or more statements. A statement is what we've been talking about all along here. It is a statement that you make about the described resource, about a thing, right? It's the element value pair, the, the thing that you say about the resource. So one or more descriptions make up a description set. Right? So a description set is the set of statements that you are making about your resource. And then, oops, I've drawn over it. Um, one and only one description set makes up a record. The metadata record is the totality of the descriptions, the entire set of statements that you have made about your resource makes up the metadata record. A single statement has one property and one value. And so we're back to element value pairs, although in this diagram it's called property instead of element, but it's essentially the same thing. Element value pairs make up a statement. Then a value has both a literal and a non-literal. Again, the element or property is creator, say. The value is Leonardo da Vinci. And then Leonardo da Vinci is two things. It is the name Leonardo da Vinci and the person, right? So there's two things. There's the actual person and the name that represents that person. Then the non-literal value is encoded in a vocabulary, right? a controlled vocabulary, an uncontrolled vocabulary, some vocabulary. Then we move on to the vocabulary model. A vocabulary is made up of one or more terms. A controlled vocabulary or even an uncontrolled vocabulary, like any language, is a set of terms. Each term is encoded in either a syntax or a vocabulary encoding scheme, some way in which those terms are defined. Now, that definition usually happens for metadata schemas in RDF, which is the Resource Description Framework, which is written in XML. We're going to leave that for the next unit. And I realize that leaves a loose end here, but I want to keep this unit focused on Dublin Core, so we're going to put that off for the moment. So we have three diagrams here, three diagrams for the abstract model. Um, and I haven't dissected each one exhaustively, and that's simply because I don't think it's necessary for our purposes here. What is the important point here is this, this first diagram, the one that we looked at in the previous video, shows us how resources are described, right? A resource is described using a property value pair. The second diagram, this one, shows us that description is encoded in a vocabulary. And then this third diagram here shows how terms in a vocabulary are encoded. So the Dublin Core abstract model 
goes from the smallest unit, the property or the value, to the largest entity, the entire vocabulary scheme, right? And what we see is the relationships between these different entities. Now, this is a, as I said, a high level model of the entities that exist in the universe of metadata, right? The Dublin core is built on this model, but as I said earlier, the point of this abstract model is that any metadata scheme can be built on this abstract model. This, this, these models are a way of establishing basic ontological categories, right? What things exist in the universe? Because once you've agreed on what things exist and the relationships between those things, it becomes easier to exchange data between different systems and different metadata schemas.